the debate. Resuming debate. Member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's an honour for me to rise before you today and talk about the new Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. Successive governments have, for too long, kicked the can down the road and treated the climate crisis as though it were a problem for our children's generation. That ends now. We are the first generation to clearly see the impact of climate change, and we are the last generation that can stop it. We cannot afford to wait any longer. We cannot saddle our children with the burden of a dying world and a sixth mass extinction event. We must act now. In December 2015, Canada joined 194 other parties in reaching a historic agreement to address climate change through the Paris Agreement. This historic agreement aims, at minimum, to limit global temperature increase to well below 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to keep the temperature increase to no more than 1.5 degrees. According to the 2018 report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, global emissions much re must, must reach carbon neutrality by 2050 to limit warming to the 1.5 degree Celsius degree goal in the Paris Agreement. Despite what, might, what some may claim, Canada is uniquely vulnerable to the effects of climate change. Canada is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world, and in the north, warming is occurring nearly three times as fast. Canadians recognize that, they, that we need to act now to avert this crisis and that they won't tolerate any inaction. I know this because in my riding of Kitchener Centre, constituents come to talk to me about climate change more than any other issue. Young Canadians are rightfully frightened by the thought of what their futures will look like if we don't get this under control now, and this is not a de debt that I'm willing to leave them. I was elected on a promise to get Canada to net zero by 2050, and that's what this bill will achieve. Within six months of this bill coming into force, the Minister will be required to set a new 2030 milestone target that exceeds our commitments under the Paris Accord and to deliver a comprehensive plan on how we are going to reach it. This is, the first, this is the vital first step towards achieving our 2050 goal of net zero emissions and every step of the way, every target and every action will be based on the best science available as well as input from Canadians of all backgrounds and experiences. That's why this bill will create an advisory body of 15 experts made up of key stakeholders including Indigenous people and other members of the public who will provide expert advice to the Minister in an annual report. This will ensure that we not only reach our 2030 target, but every target that comes after that also. These targets will be vital to keeping the government on track, but they're only one piece of the puzzle. Targets need to be followed up with action, and fortunately, our government is already moving ahead on that action to ensure that Canada is at the forefront of the green economy of tomorrow. The World Bank estimates that climate action will create $30 trillion in new investment opportunities by 2030, and our government is already making sure that Canadians are the ones who will reap those rewards. Through policies such as retrofitting homes and other buildings to be energy efficient and building new clean energy infrastructure, not only are we taking action to meet our climate goals, but we're investing in the economy of the future and creating well-paying middle-class jobs for Canadians. We are making zero-emission vehicles more affordable for Canadians and investing in new charging infrastructure so that Canadians coast to coast to coast can confidently reach their destination in an electric vehicle. Electric vehicles are important in decarbonizing our economy, but in order to truly maximize their potential, we need to ensure that the energy used to recharge their batteries is generated from non-emitting and renewable sources. The energy sector will play a key part in our national effort to reach carbon net zero, and the federal government will be there to support them. Initiatives such as the Clean Power Fund will not only help increase our clean energy generating capacity, but also build the infrastructure that moves that energy from where it's produced to where it's consumed. Our government knows that we can't reach net zero without the ingenuity and the know-how of the energy sector. Fortunately, the energy, the energy sector is already stepping up and embracing this opportunity. Oil and gas companies like Enbridge, Suncor, and Shell have already made commitments to net zero emissions and they're innovating to rise to the challenge. The oil and gas sector has recognized the value behind our approach to legislate accountability and the importance of reaching net zero emissions by 2050. 
the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers have, ex have expressed their support for this policy, and so has Shell Canada stating, I quote, we applaud the Government of Canada's action and look forward to working with them and doing our part to help Canada achieve this goal, end quote. Canada's energy sector is on, on side and recognizes the importance of this legislation. In fact, this legislation has received broad support, not just from the oil and gas industry, but across all sectors of the economy, from major labour organisations such as Unifor to financial giants like TD Canada Trust and major business organisations like the Business Council of Canada and the Toronto Regional Board of Trade. But perhaps most importantly, environmental groups have overwhelmingly supported this vital step towards ensuring that we reach net zero by 2050. Echo, Echo Justice wrote that, quote, this legislation is a significant step to put Canada on the course to achieve its emission targets and sets up Canada to become a global leader. It is a comprehensive bill that can maintain momentum for climate change, climate action, when the spotlight is off the federal government, end quote. The David Suzuki Foundation stated that cette loi a un grand potentiel. This act has great potential. It could be a solid base for the future in terms of national climate and international climate objectives. An act on climate responsibility is exactly what the climate emergency needs right now. The Prosperity Institute said this net zero law charts a course for Canada's environmental and economic success. It will help us keep pace with global leaders in tackling climate change and build a roadmap for future competitive competitiveness and jobs in a changing world. This support is vitally important to ensuring that we are successful in reaching our goal and that support is possible because we listen to experts. Our government cannot reach these goals alone. Everyone must come together so that we can achieve net zero. While each individual and business has a role to play in making net zero happen, it is a government that must be held accountable, and this bill does exactly that. Not only does this bill require the establishment of legally binding targets every five years, it also requires that an emissions reduction plan, a progress report, and an assessment report be tabled in the House of Commons for each five-year milestone. These will be key to ensuring that this and successive governments remain transparent and accountable to Canadian voters. But, but perhaps equally importantly, in addition to these robust, in, in addition to these robust accountability mechanisms, the Commissioner of Environment and Sustainable Development, an independent body, must examine and report on the Government of Canada's progress within five years of this Act coming into force and every five years thereafter. Enshrining this key oversight in law will ensure that Canadians know if their government is living up to its obligations on climate change and will provide the public with the necessary information to hold us accountable. This bill isn't a plan to make a plan. This bill sets clear priorities, timelines, accountability mechanisms, and independent oversight to reach and then to exceed our Paris Agreement goals. This vital framework forms the roadmap to a better Canada and sets us on a trajectory to achieve a clean and prosperous future. But to achieve that future, we must start today at this key juncture in time. When future generations look back at the fight against climate change, against the fight against the climate crisis, they will see this as the moment when Canadians decided not to do what is easy, but to do what is right. When we choose to look to the future, not to the past. The actions that we take now will define not only our children's future, but the future of every generation that comes after them. Never before, Madam Speaker, in history has one generation had as much responsibility for the well-being of all subsequent generations as ours does today. And so, here I call on my honourable colleagues to put aside our differences and work together for the good of our planet and all humanity. Not just the future of our country, but the future of our world depends on it. Thank you, Madam Speaker.